want to give you. Something you're going to treasure until the beginning of next week. A sticker. Tyler, would you do me a favor? Would you read this sticker out loud for everybody? I held a tarantula. I held a tarantula. This is one of my biggest fears. Is it really? This is great then. Will you do this with me? Sure. Give me five. Folks, not everybody who comes up here to hold a tarantula is quite as enthusiastic as Tyler appears to be. So I had to give my tarantula a really cute name so the boys and girls wouldn't be afraid. Tyler, you know what I named my tarantula? Cookie. Anybody, anybody? Yes. Tyler, do cookies hurt you? No. No, not until you're my age. And you're going to find out, Tyler, that Cookie here is just the sweetest little thing you ever saw that just happens to have eight eyes and eight legs. Oh, that means... Oh. Tyler? I promise she's not going to hurt you. Now, Tyler, you've got two... Wait, this is great, great opportunity. Tyler, you've got two choices now. One, I don't make anything, anybody do anything they don't want to do. Okay? If you want to sit down, you can but what I don't want to happen tonight, if you go that route, I don't want you to lay your head on the pillow tonight and think, I could have done that, but I was afraid. I should have done that, but I was afraid. Why didn't I do that? I let fear make my decision for me. So Tyler, I promise she's not going to hurt you. You might not ever get this opportunity again. And I promise, even though you're afraid, you're, this is going to be well worth it, okay? okay? So both hands, just like this, please don't drop her. She's not going to hurt you. Tyler? Mm -hmm. Is she hurting you? No. Kind of cool, actually, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Kind of neat. Now I'm going to go ahead and get her. You okay if I take her? And Tyler, just like that, you held a tarantula. And you get a highly coveted, one of a kind, limited edition, I held a tarantula sticker. Thank you. Now, Tyler, before you go back, really quick. Now that it's all over with, now that you went through that panic phase and then you swallowed that fear down and you held the tarantula, now that you're on the other side, are you kind of glad you did it? Yes. That's the way it is with most of our fear and the times that we have courage. A lot of times we can be so afraid of sharing the gospel with Jesus, but you know, about, about Jesus, but we get on the other side, and it's good. Now, how old are you, Tyler? Eleven. Eleven. I like you. There's nothing I wouldn't do for a brave young man because you, de you demonstrated courage right here. So you know what I'm going to do for you now? Mm -hmm. Tyler, I'm going to let you pick the adult in the room that you'd like to see hold the tarantula. They will do it for you, Tyler. Any grown-up in the room. I have one person which I know would never... Get up here. She already knows who I mean. Get up. <laughs> now. Oh, what's your name? Caitlin. Now, Caitlin, I just, saw, uh, just so I know Diamond Dynamics, how do you know Tyler? Tyler is my sweet son. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, uh, Tyler, he's something, isn't he? And I'm sorry, what's your name? Again? Caitlin. Caitlin. Uh, uh, Caitlin, um, before we go through with this, boys and girls, I've got to talk with Miss Caitlin, make sure everything's cool. Miss Caitlin, have you ever held a tarantula before? No. I have to let you know there's nothing to it. I've held tarantulas for decades. I've only been bitten like seven or eight times. The chance of anything happening here is pretty small. Now, Caitlin, do you have a bucket list? I better make one right now. Well, you know, you can make it when you get home, but at the very top tonight, when you get home, you write down holding a tarantula, you scratch it off the list because you're going to take care of that little wish list tonight, okay? So you saw how, how Tyler did it. Just come up, you give both hands out just like this. There's really going to be nothing to it. Just both hands, just like that. Oh, one more thing. Tarantulas don't like getting their feet wet. We're going to ask Miss, uh, Miss Caitlin to please mop the sweat out of her palms one more time. And then we'll go ahead and we'll just put that. How are you doing there, Miss Caitlin? It's I'm not good. so, not so bad. Tyler, Tyler. I am so sorry. I have had a long day. Now, I'm going to give your mom her sticker, but I made a little bit of a mistake here. You know what I did? I accidentally let your mom hold the children's spider. <laughs> now, don't we think mom ought to hold the grown-up spider? Yes! I'll be, I'll be right back, Caitlin.
Oh, Caitlin, I'm just funny with you. This is a Goliath, don't go away though. Okay. This is a Goliath bird-eating tarantula. It's about halfway grown. These are the largest tarantula in the world. When they're fully grown, Caitlin, they can have a leg span the size of a dinner plate. If they bite you, good news, bad news. The good news is the venom's not very strong. The bad news is the fangs on this one are over a half inch long. A full grown one are over an inch long. That's going to the bone. I like to think when God made the Goliath bird eater, he kind of sat back, stroked his chin and said, there, that one's not going down the bathtub drain. Now, Caitlin, you're probably wondering why you are still standing here. Yeah. Because I have something I want to show you. You see, I talk a lot and I'm not sure the boys and girls fully comprehended what I just told them. I'll be right back. You're not going to have to touch or hold anything. Trust me on that. Caitlin, did you know that tarantulas, like other spiders and like other arthropods, did you know they shed their skin? And when they shed their skin, they leave behind an almost exact replica of themselves. Can't tell you how many times I've gone in the critter cabin and found enclosures where I thought, hey, where'd that other tarantula come from? And what they do is they leave a very brittle exoskeleton behind. The new exoskeleton expands because it's soft, and that's how they grow. Even the fangs are left behind. And so what you can see right here, Miss Caitlin, those two shiny black things, th those are the fangs. Now, Miss Caitlin, I'm just asking you, I can't walk around with this. This is too brittle. I can't show everybody. And so I'm not sure the kids believe me when I told you that the fangs on this tarantula here are about a half inch long. Well, can you verify that for me, please? They're definitely at least that long. Yeah. And they would go to the bone. Do you realize what Miss Caitlin did right now? Miss Caitlin was a witness, okay? She verified something that I was telling her. And you know, we are all called upon to be witnesses for Jesus. And all that involves, Miss Caitlin, is just telling other people what Jesus has done in our life and what he can do in theirs. But sometimes that's really scary to do. But you know what? God tells us again, fear not, fear not. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. So just a little thing you might be able to take with you. Did I give you a sticker yet? You did, thank you. No, right. Well, you did fine up here, Caitlin, thank, thank you. you. Boys and girls, this next bug, we are not taking it out of its enclosure. This next bug is too big. This next bug is too fast. This next bug. Uh, this next bug is a little bit dangerous, and I cannot be held responsible for any nightmares or sleepless nights that any of you children or Miss Caitlin has after we talk about this bug for a little bit. This is one that we just don't take any chance. This is one we just don't take any chances with. This is a giant Asian centipede. That's huge. Everybody have a seat so I can walk. Please, please sit down. You're going to see it. This is a giant Asian centipede. Up until a few years ago, the giant Asian centipede was the only kind of centipede in the world that had ever killed somebody with its bite. Let me sink, let that sink in. Up until a few years ago, the giant Asian centipede was the only kind of centipede in the world that had ever killed somebody with its bite. Things changed a few years ago. Back in 2014, there was a little boy who lived in Venezuela. That's in northern South America. This little boy was walking down the pathway and he happened to see a soda can laying off in the grass. Something you need to understand about Venezuela. The way they run their country down there, there's a few people at the top of the government that control everybody else. They control how much money you can make, how much food you can buy, how much electricity you can use, how much gasoline you can have, what, where and if you can go to church or not. It's a horrible way to live. And I can promise you this little boy had never opened up a cold refrigerator at home and pulled out a cold soda. So when he found this soda can laying in the grass, he picked it up. It had a little weight to it, and he lifted it to his lips. And he didn't know that a giant Amazonian centipede was inside the can. The little boy was bitten on the mouth, and unfortunately, he passed away. Now, boys and girls, as terrible as that story is, it's relevant to us living here in South Carolina, because in this state, we're cooking out 11 months out of the year. 
And you might be outside, you might pop open the soda can, you might take a sip from it, set it on the picnic table, then go hit the trampoline or the pool for a, few, for a little while. You gotta be careful coming back to that soda can because yellow jackets and honeybees love that sugary drink as well. And I'm telling you from experience, when I was a little boy, I got stung like that and I had to walk around for the better part of a week like I had a cherry under my front lip. Boys and girls, with this centipede, it happened differently. There was a little girl, nine years old, who lived in the Philippines. That's in Southeast Asia. While she was asleep on the ground, a giant Asian centipede crept up next to her body and made its way all the way up to her head. When she rolled over, she was bitten on the side of the head by the centipede, and that little girl died 29 hours after the bite. Now I get it, these are terrible stories to tell at a vacation Bible school, but I'm telling you these stories for a reason. It's to remind everybody in the room that here in America, the only time we sleep on the ground, we do it for fun when we go camping or fishing. Here in America, most of us live in nice homes that are built to keep things like this out of our house. Some of us may have someone who comes around sprays for bugs every now and then. Our beds are built so they're up off the floor so it makes it hard for things to crawl into bed with us. We have very good medical care here, and here in America, we don't have 10-inch centipedes running around that can kill you with a bite. Boys and girls, I'm pretty thankful to be an American. I hope you are too. I have been around the world a couple of times. I've been to the Philippines twice, and I can promise you if you go around the world, you're gonna see millions of kids just like you who trade places with anybody in this room in a heartbeat because they don't have what you have and they don't have your opportunities. There are children all around this world that have never used a bathroom like we know it. Never, had, uh, never had, got to sleep in a warm bed. Never been to a vacation Bible school and have never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, we're, I'm gonna do something here that might catch you a little bit by surprise. Because you know what I'm gonna do? All you boys and girls and teenagers in the room, I'm giving you some homework. Now wait, wait, wait. Now where do we do homework? Home. At home. We don't do homework at school. You may do extra schoolwork at school to keep becoming homework, but words mean things. Plus, I happen to know that school's out right now. And I also know that your homework assignment's not that very difficult, and you're gonna be very glad you did it after you do it. You wanna know what your homework assignment is? Here it comes. I'm a nice guy, so you don't even have to do it tonight. You've got all the way until next Wednesday to do it. Here's your homework assignment. When you're at home, and your parents are home, and maybe even your grandparents are over, you might even have to do this twice. I want each one of you boys and girls and teenagers, I want you to go up to your parents and I want you to give them a great big hug and I want you to thank them for all the things they do for you. I want you to thank them for the sacrifices they make for you. I want you to thank them for all the times they have to wait 20 or 30 minutes in a car line for you. Sometimes your parents and grandparents have to make decisions that you don't like and you don't understand why mom and dad won't let you go here or there or do this or that and you like to run upstairs with a poochy lip disease. Do we all know what the poochy lip disease is? It's this. Nobody loves me. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> I can't have what I want. It's not fair. But I know we all have family and friends. We have a holy creator God who loves us beyond measure. There's not a person in this room that has any reason to get poochy lip disease. Boys and girls, your parents love you so much they're willing to have you mad at them for a little bit in order to try to protect you from something. And I think instead of getting the poochy lip disease, what would happen if instead we all had an attitude of gratitude? Can you say that? Now that just means you're thankful for the people and the things in your life and you don't take them for granted. Remember, the Bible says give thanks in all things. It's okay to be thankful for a little brother or a little sister. It's okay to be thankful for your parents and your grandparents. It's okay to be thankful for that crazy uncle all of us have. It's okay to be thankful for our home and our community, our church, and it's okay to be thankful for our country. I've never met a soul in my life who was happy who was also unthankful. And I've never met anybody who was unthankful that you could call happy. It's almost like being thankful is a key to happiness. So with a quick show of hands, who in here is like I am and loves being happy? Then be thankful, best way to get there. Now, boys and girls, I'm thankful we don't have giant centipedes living here in the United States because I've read the accounts of their bites. They're pretty terrifying. You see, boys and girls, when a centip giant centipede bites, they have two mouth parts, the end and fangs, that meet, 
And so when they bite, they pinch, and those, pin those fangs almost meet inside your tissue. Venom is injected, and with the large centipedes, they hang on with all those other sharp legs that break the skin as well. So by the time you get the centipede off, it looks like you've had stitches removed. Every account of a giant centipede bite I've ever read uses one word in common, and that word is excruciating. Everybody say excruciating. You look that word up in the dictionary, it means really bad, super intense, almost unbearable pain. But what I find interesting is where we get the word. X means out of. See the exit signs? X means out of. Cruce, C-R-U-C-I, is the cross. Out of the cross. Excruciating is a direct reference to the horrible pain and the horrible suffering that our Lord and Savior suffered on his way to the cross and while he was on it. And boys and girls, I'm thankful he did that eternally. I'm thankful because after he died on the cross, he rose again three days later, and in doing so, he conquered death for each one of us in here. So long as we accept that. So boys and girls, that way we don't have to be thankful this week or this month. We can be thankful all throughout eternity for what Jesus has done for us. Boys and girls, who's ready for some reptiles? I'm not. I got something else I'm going to show you. I was going to skip this guy, but I kind of alluded to him earlier. And remember when I talked about the real colorful animal that you might think is poisonous or dangerous? I know you've seen them in books and in programs and stuff, but I don't know if you've ever seen one uh, in real life. This is a red-eyed tree frog. Boys and girls, I've got to tell you, my little red-eyed tree frogs, I've got several of them. These guys give me fits. You know why? Because every morning when I get ready to go out and do a program, I've got to get my animals together. I go out and try to find my red-eyed tree frogs, and I can't find them in their cage. I don't know if they got out. I don't know if they're dead. And then eventually I find them. The reason I can't find them is because they're so well camouflaged because they're asleep. Their eyes are shut and their legs are folded up next to them. And even those bright orange toes are tucked up underneath their body. Boys and girls, oh, wake up here. You're, what are you napping for? There we go, okay, there we go. But when you disturb them a little bit like I just did, those eyes open up and all this bright color, this blue, this white, these orange toes, it just explodes in color. And boys and girls, that's what in, in science, in biology, we call startle coloration. He's camouflaged, but he's about to get ready to eat, and so boom, he shows off these colors. And in Central America, brightly colored frogs are kind of a big deal because you have poison dart frogs there too. So animals are really sketchy about eating brightly colored frogs. But those little bright colors save that guy's life. All right, who's ready for reptiles? That's an amphibian. I'm not ready for reptiles. I got something else I'm going to show you. And this one is poisonous. I said poisonous. I did not say venomous. There is a difference. A venomous animal delivers its venom with fangs, a stinger, or spines. The venom is injected into your body like a doctor giving you a shot. A poisonous animal, the poison gets absorbed through your skin, or you swallow it, you get it in your eyes. Now, if that's confusing, think of it like this. If it bites you and you die, it was venomous. If you bite it and you die, it was poisonous. That's how this works. Now, even though this guy's poisonous, I'm pretty sure you're going to love him because everybody loves Buford, the giant cane toad. And Antonio Banderas. And last but not least, Tony Soprano. Now, I'm not a meteorologist, but there's about a 50% chance of showers while I have these guys out here like this. And boys and girls, these are cane toads. Cane toads, and they are poisonous. Do you see the big bumps behind the head? Those are the poison glands. And when these toads get stressed out, they can ooze out a milky white poison out of those bumps, and that poison can kill a dog or a cat or a snake. Nothing makes the mistake of eating a cane toad twice. These toads were, are from South America, but they were brought into Florida and Hawaii and Australia to kill bugs that were eating up sugarcane fields. They didn't do such a good job of all that. Now these toads are running around like crazy. 
People lose their pets to these guys in South Florida. Let your dog outside, 10 o'clock at night, gets hold of a cane toad, crosses the rainbow bridge the next day. Boys and girls, the little toad I have here, little Buford, he weighs in about pound, pound and a quarter. These other two toads, they're coming in about three pounds a piece. Cane toads get over six pounds. I can't wait to be toting around a six pound toad. It'd be totally awesome. <laughs> Make me pretty hoppy though. <laughs> I get seven or eight of these big guys, I'm gonna have to break down and get me a toad truck. <laughs> hey, what's your name with the bow in your hair? Ariel. Ariel, come here for a second. Hey, listen everybody. I know we've all heard or read the fairy tale where if a pretty girl kisses a toad, it turns into a prince. Using the scientific method, I have a hypothesis that when Ariel plants a big smackaroo on one of these toads, it will not turn into a prince. But I've got to test my hypothesis. That's how the scientific method works. Ariel, pucker up. You want me to actually kiss him? Did you want to kiss him? Better not, Ariel. <laughs> Better not. Ariel, I got good news and bad news for you. You want to hear the good news? We're not going to make you kiss a toad. Do you want to hear the bad news? Bad news, toads didn't want to kiss you either, Ariel. We already get, we get already put them back. They don't have to kiss a pretty girl. They always do this little hoppy dance. Oh, wait, nobody look. Turn your eyes away. Never look directly at a total eclipse. All right, thank you, Ariel. I was just having a little fun with you. We still friends? Okay, let me hang. All right. Missy, how am I doing on time? Okay, just good? I get, how much? 20? Okay. All right, I know what I'm gonna do. Boys and girls, have you ever heard or read about the Komodo dragon? The Komodo dragon is the largest lizard in the world. The Komodo dragon gets over 10 feet long, and it was recently discovered to be venomous. The Komodo dragon can kill a water buffalo with its bite. It just takes about a week. Boys and girls, it is against the law for me as a private collector to have a Komodo dragon. And I gotta be honest, I don't think I'd want one. They get too big, they're too dangerous, they're too messy, they're probably too expensive. My insurance would probably drop me, and I don't have the room. But if we can get very quiet and hold very still, you want to see the little cousin to the Komodo dragon? Yeah! Shh! Ha! <laughs> Sleeping. You always wake him up before you pick him up. Hey, buddy. Hey, you up? Hey, you up? We got some boys and girls here that want to see you. Let's get you up here. Come here. Let me get you up. No, I got it. Oh, are we still friends? I was just pooping you a little bit. What do we see different here? What do we see different here? Red tape. What do we learn about the color red? Danger, right? Boys and girls. Boys and girls. The animal inside this bin is a dangerously venomous reptile. I'm going to ask everybody to stay seated and not move around a little bit. Misty, there's not an instruction manual I can refer to on how to be the critter keeper. I'm flying by the seat of my pants up here. I just figured today I started bringing a dangerously venomous reptile into homes, and schools, and churches, and libraries, and that convalescent home that one time. Figured I'd better go ahead and mark things up in red. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, have you ever heard or read about the black neck spitting cobra? I don't have one, I just want to see if you've heard of it or not. I have something here just a little bit cooler than a black neck spitting cobra. Shh, shh. Are, 
we still friends? Hey, listen, it would be crazy for a critter keeper to bring a dangerously venomous reptile into a vacation Bible school with a bunch of kids right here. Which, Misty, I guess that's why in my family I'm called the crazy uncle, because here we go. This is the reptile formerly known as Brutus. Changed her name to Brutella when she dumped a few eggs on me several years ago. She is not a Gila monster. She's the Gila monster's big cousin, the Mexican beaded lizard. And boys and girls, these lizards are venomous. These, when they bite, they have venom glands in their lower jaw, grooved teeth on the lower jaw. When they bite, their jaws lock, they chew. Sometimes they'll roll over onto their back so the venom is gravity fed into the wound. Look at her color. She's marked up like a bumblebee. She's got warning colors all over her. So if you were in Mexico or Guatemala and this animal crossed your path, probably not the best idea you had all day to rush up there and pick her up. Boys and girls, I've had this animal for over nine years. And I can't tell you how many times I've, had to, I've taken her out of her cage at home, put her in bins, in and out, several times a day. This is the third time today. And uh, when I get home tonight, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to open the bin, I'm going to lift her up by the tail, and without the hook, I'm going to slide my hand under her chest and put her in her enclosure. But uh, when I'm in public, and when I have boys and girls that may be jumping up and down or whatever, I always use the hook. You know why? Because I respect this animal and what she could do to me. Now one day, one day, when we're in heaven, I'll be able to hold something like this and not have to worry about it. That's during the part of the vacation Bible school system that you've learned about the consummation where everything's perfect again and animals don't have to protect themselves. And uh, we can go, some of you ladies might be, you know, might get around to holding tarantulas then, you know, because, you know, they're not going to hurt you at all. But boys and girls, the reason I tell you that is because as things stand right now in our age, I respect this animal a lot. And I think... In our society today, I don't think we always respect one another like we should. I don't think we always respect the animals we have in our homes the way we should. But what about the animals in our national parks? Every other week I'm seeing a new video. Hey, can you guys put the wands down for a second and just listen? Please? Put your hands down. Yeah, we see you on the camera. Boys and girls, uh, every other week I'm seeing a new video of somebody out in Yellowstone trying to get a selfie with a bison or a bear or something. And you know, for right now, even though we have dominion over the earth, we still have that corruption. And so those animals are going to be more interested in protecting themselves and protecting their babies and protecting their food source and their territory. So we have to get, continue to give those animals the respect that they deserve. All right, I need a volunteer. Now, my volunteer cannot be afraid of snakes. My volunteer, my volunteer cannot be afraid to touch a snake, pick a snake up, or hold a snake. My, Raylan, right? Ray, Ray, are you, are you, Raylan, are you cool with this? Right? Yeah. You don't mind holding a snake, right? No. You're not even afraid if a snake bites you, really, are you? Um, no? Yeah. Hey, I'll be right back, Raylan. Let me see what I got back here. Raylan, I want you to gently, gently, and, and cautiously, I want you to reach into this bag and just bring the snake out so everybody can see it. Go ahead. It's all right. It's not going to hurt you too bad, I think. Go ahead. No, you got, you got this, Raylan. There you go. Woo. Oh, wait, Raylan. That snake's not real. That's a good thing, I think, don't you? Yeah. You know what kind of snake that is? No. That is a dangerous eastern coral snake. Now, we don't have coral snakes up here in our area up here, but if you go down to the beach, go down to Columbia, Myrtle Beach, Charleston, Savannah, you can find these snakes. They're actually in the cobra family. And you know what? They do have those bright colors we were talking about. And we have a little poem that helps us determine whether the snake is venomous or, not, or, or harmless. Do you know how that poem goes? It goes red touch black, I mean red touch yellow, kills a fellow. Red touch black, friend of Jack. 
Okay. Do you know why they call it friend of Jack? Why? Because nothing rhymes with Raylan. <laughs> right? Now, Raylan, do you see anything else in the bag? Here, you can hold this for a second. Yeah. And there's a zipper down there. I'm going to unzip it. And I can stick my hand all the way through there. Wow. Okay. See, the, see the carpet? Yeah. And I'm going to go ahead and zip this back up. Now, Raylan, I want you to go ahead and give me the snake back. Now, Raylan, now I want you to go ahead and let everybody know that little poem we just learned. Go ahead and say the poem. Red touches yellow, kills a fellow. Red touches black, is a friend of Jack. Okay, you needed help to do that. Let's go ahead and do it again, gently. Go ahead. Raylan. Go ahead. <laughs> How about you grab that? You may get it? No, yeah, yeah. Brian, I'm getting the snake back up. All right, boys and girls, can I get a little love for that magic? Oh, look, 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 look what's happening. What's happening there, Raylan? It bit you. It still is biting me. Uh, Didn't even, she does that. That's why I wanted to get her out of your hand real quick. Boys and girls, can I get a little love for that magic trick? It was just an illusion, all right? I did a little trick, you know, a little sleight of hand, but it made, gave, me, gave the appearance of me turning a rubber coral snake into a live milk snake. I can't do that. That would be miraculous. But, but every single day, God takes somebody who's dangerous. He takes somebody who's plastic. He takes somebody who's not real. He takes someone who's spiritually dead, and he quickens them and he makes them more alive and more beautiful and more beneficial than they've ever been before in their life. And we don't even bat an eye. Boys and girls, I believe the great, listen to this, the greatest miracle on earth is that God loved us so much that he sent his only son to, that all we have to do is believe and confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and we shall be saved. And boys and girls, that's the miracle that God would love us so much that he would, he would give us eternity in heaven with him. And I don't know if anybody here has ever had a miracle in their life. I know I have because I had a, had a lot of faithful people praying for me. And I'll tell you what, when you know that God answered a prayer where your life depended on it, all because people were praying, that's a miracle too. All too often, God doesn't do miracles. He may, we're not asking for those miracles and we're not, don't believe God's gonna do that miracle. And like I said, we wouldn't know a miracle if we hit it between, if we hit it between us, uh, but hit it, hit us between the eyes. But God loves work and miracles, but we have to ask, for, everybody needs a miracle at some point. And I'm not saying your miracle is right and perfect with God's will, but that doesn't hurt to drop to your knees and pray for something. God loves work and miracles in families and in homes and in communities. And God help us as a nation he loves working miracles. But what we have to be doing, doing our part and praying. Okay, I need another volunteer. My volunteer cannot be afraid of snakes. My, volu my volunteer cannot be afraid to touch a snake, pick a snake up, or hold a snake. My volunteer cannot have already come out here for any reason. And this young lady over here with the glasses, what is your name? Is what? Adela? Adela? Come here, Adela. I'll put you right here. I I need, what's your name? It's what? Major. 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 Come here, Major. Put your name. Major, do you know Adela? Adela, you know Major? You do? Okay, all right. Well, just go ahead. Um, yes, what is your name? It's what? Easton. Easton. Come here, Easton. Easton, go ahead and park it right next to Major there, please, right there. Let me look over here and see if I got anybody from this. Hey, your hand's up. What's your name? Is what? Kai. Kai? Can I say that loud? Come here, Kai. Kai, right here next to Easton. Right here, Kai. So I got Kai. I got Easton. I got Major. I got Adela. Really? What's your name? Malia. Malia? Malia, I'm going to put you right here. So, oh boy, now I'm messing up. I got Adela. I got Major. I got Malia. I got Easton. What's your name again? Kai. 
Kai. Kai. I'm looking for the girliest girl. The girliest girl. Oh, no, she's got a, you got a hurt arm. Her. What's your name? Paisley. Paisley has got to be about the girliest girl's name I've ever heard. Paisley, <laughs> will you join us up here, Daughter. please? I'll come. <laughs> I'll put you right down here by Adela. So I got Paisley. I got Adela. I've got Major. <laughs> Malia. And Easton. And what's your name again, Kai? I'm Kai. Okay. <laughs> By raising their hands and by volunteering, these seven intrepid souls are going to help me. Does everybody understand what the word intrepid means? Intrepid means boldly courageous, fearless, endlessly brave. You can use that in a, at the dinner table conversation tonight. And mom, dad, Critter Keeper came to vacation Bible school. I was intrepid. These seven intrepid... One, two, three, four, five, six... If anybody's missing somebody, they're crawling under the pews right here. Not mine. I do that every single time. And what's your name, ma'am? Ma'am? What's your name? Yeah. Amy? Amy. Come on, let's do this. She doesn't want to. Amy. Come on, this will be fun. Amy, I'm going to put you right here. Thank you so much. <laughs> Am I really welcome, Aunt Amy? <laughs> All right, so I got Kai. I've got Easton. I've got Malia. I've got Major. What's your what? I was doing the kids' names. What's your name? Amy. 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 And I've got Adela, and we have Paisley. By raising their hands and by volunteering, or simply by being conspicuously silent in the pew, these seven intrepid souls uh, have summarily agreed uh, to help me with Julia Squeezer. Listen up, listen up. Inside this box is Julia Squeezer. Julius is about 12 feet long. Julius weighs about 50 pounds. Let me tell you how this is going to work. I will be the one that unfastens the latches at either end of the bin. I will be the one that lifts the lid. I will be the one that takes the deep personal risk of lowering my hands into a darkened bin where a large snake awaits. I will bring him out head first. I will maintain control of his head, at which time, Kai, you'll be up. You get your hands up under his neck and you scoop up some Julius. I'll have his head. Easton, get your hands up under there, scoop up some Julius. Malia, you know what you're doing? You're scooping up some Julius. Major, starting to get a little heavy here. Don't want to see any of this. I don't want that, okay? I need you to reach down there, my friend, and scoop up some Julius. Amy. A Amy, you're my anchor. Now, Amy, I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but besides me, you're the only other adult up here. I'm gonna kind of need you to act like one. <laughs> now, Amy, I'm gonna, be, <laughs> I'm gonna be a little preoccupied with the head down there. I need, you to, I need you to take total command down here. You reach down there, you scoop up as much of that thick muscular coil as you can. Now, lift with your legs, we don't want anybody getting hurt. And you take what's left and hand over to Adela, and by extension, Paisley, okay? Now, Adela, Paisley, you ladies and I, we've got a very important job, okay? Ladies, I'm going to be down here. I'm going to have the head. You ladies are going to be down there, and you're going to get the tail. Girls, the head is where the food goes in. It has never in the history of Critter Keeper shows happened. If it does, Paisley, I'll get you a brand new T-shirt. I'll get you a new Care Bear thing, Adela. Yeah. Have we good there, Miss Amy? Good. Are we good, Major? Malia? Uh, up, 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 up. Easton? And Kai. Whew. Hey, Raylan. I do pretty well with names. I mean, I have to. In this line of work, if I ever have to notify next to Ken, I just figure it's a great touch. You guys ready to meet Julia Squeezer? Yeah!
I'm going to unfasten the latches. We're going to lift up the lid. Oh, my. Because Pastor talked for too long up here. That's what happened. Come on, Kai. Come on, Easton. He's not going to magically love it. Yeah, come on in there. My, is it real? <laughs> oh, look, they're taking pictures. You know what you, know what you say when you're holding Julius and they're taking pictures, Amy? Everybody say squeeze. Squeeze. Julius is an albino Burmese python right now about 12 feet long. He will top out around 16 feet in length. If he was a girl, he'd get over 20 feet long, 250 pounds. Give my intrepid helpers, especially Miss Amy, a big round of applause. We're going to put him in jail first. Okay. Good job. You need a lot pro up there. You did so good. Hey, boys and girls. Hey, boy. Yeah, he's real. Boys and girls, really quickly. Can I have your attention for a second, boys and girls? I do want to tell you just a real quick story about the day I got this snake. I adopted him about 15 years ago. And at that point, he was just a little under seven feet long. And when I brought him home, I had built a cage. And that very first night that I put him in that cage, he escaped into the garage. Oh, yeah, there was an emergency critter keeper meeting with my wife that night, okay? Anyway, the next day I found him. He was easy enough to find. He was curled up, taking a nap behind the wicker stand in our garage. But when I brought him out from behind the uh, wicker stand, imagine my dismay to find out that while he was crawling through the garage, he had gotten on a sticky trap that was in the garage to catch the errant crickets. And so he had easily gotten off that sticky trap, but it left the side of his body sticky. And so I had this big, beautiful yellow and white snake with a black spot as big as my hand on the side of his body. So uh, I was a little dismayed, but I knew I could take care of this. So I took some vegetable oil, and I tried to clean it off. It wouldn't come off. I took some rubbing alcohol, tried to clean it off. It wouldn't come off. I gave up, and I put him back into his cage, securing at that time. But boys and girls, with God as my witness, the next day when I went out there in the morning, imagine my surprised to find out that overnight Julius had shed his skin and when he shed his skin all of his old skin came off and all that junk that was stuck to him came off and there that snake was just brand spanking new and that's when I realized what a unique opportunity I had as the critter keeper because believe me all of us children and adults we go through life and we pick up junk in our hearts and our lives that the Bible calls sin and we might think because we spent the week at, Iwan, or week at vacation Bible school or we go to church or we're in a Christian family that that takes the sin away. It doesn't. That's just the rubbing alcohol or the, the vegetable oil that we think is going to work. There's only one thing that takes the, our sin away, and that's the blood of Jesus Christ. 1 John 1.9 says, If we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The first time we do that, we enter into a relationship with the Savior. And he cleanses us, but we're not perfect, and, and we're going to sin again. But you know what? We have to go ahead and confess those sins as well. That's what that relationship's all about. The cool thing about that is, I believe that all nature is an example for us, but the same, we have to do that as a Christian for the same reason the snake sheds its skin, and the same reason the Goliath bird-eating tarantula sheds its skin, we do this in order to grow. We have to grow as Christians. And so we do have to go back and confess that sin. And as I'm going to close it uh, here in a couple minutes. I'm going to give it off to the pastor. But please, if you, these, this is an evil time we're living in. Time is growing short, folks. And if you've never made that the life decision, now may be the time. You know, if I was, if I, if I recommended a good Mexican restaurant down the street, I mean, half of you say, yeah, I'm going to go check that out. Or if I re recommended a good book or a movie, you might check it out. I recommend Jesus. I recommend Jesus.
Now with that, boys and girls, I have one last animal to show you. There's a reason I bring this animal out last. And you're gonna love him, I hope. His name is Nigel, and Nigel is a Euromastix lizard. Now, I bring him out for one reason, you know, I bring him out to close the program because over the past eight to 10 months, Nigel and I have been working diligently. I've been trying to teach this lizard how to wave bye-bye to a group of kids at the end of a program. <sighs> Finally, we're there. And so when Nigel waves bye-bye to you, it would be a kind and a courteous gesture for you boys and girls to wave bye-bye back to Nigel. It would also be kind and courteous if your pictures make it onto Facebook to like Critter Keeper on Facebook. In nature, we call that symbiosis when two organisms help one another out. Nigel, this has been a great group of young people and their families tonight. So I'm just going to go ahead and hush up. I'm gonna, why don't you just go ahead and close this out. You wave bye-bye to the kids and we're done. Go ahead, Nigel. <laughs> Nigel, now's the time. You go ahead and wave bye-bye, please. Nigel, listen here. Lately, you've been a little lackluster in your effort, and I want to remind you I can swap you out with a bearded dragon anytime I choose. I'm going to need you to start taking your job seriously, start waving bye-bye to the kids. They're actually expecting a lizard to wave bye-bye to them. If you don't do this, Nigel, I think I'll be tempted to leave you home tomorrow and not even turn the heat lamp on. So you better get busy and start waving bye-bye to the kids. Go ahead, Nigel. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Nigel. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you very much, boys and girls. I'll turn it over to Pastor Daniel, please. Uh, let me turn. Okay, hey. Um, to our guests, I want to assure you, we do not handle snakes in our church, okay? At least not on a regular basis. If you're looking for a snake handling church, I think Summit Church handles snakes. Is that, is that right? Okay. So, yeah. So, so, so see them over here. They'll, they'll tell you about the snake handling and everything. But, hey, let's, let's thank the Critter Creature for, uh, Keeper for coming out tonight. Thank you. And hey, I want us to thank Miss Misty. And I don't know where Mr. Michael went. There he is, Mr. Michael back there in the back, yay. Hey, thank you so much for being here tonight. Is there anything we need to announce? Okay, we're gonna go outside and eat. I'm gonna have the blessing. And then we're gonna go out and have, a, have some, uh, some food. So uh, kids, be sure to get with your parents and, uh, and help yourself out there. And once again, we look forward to seeing your kids back here. Uh, Sunday morning, 9.15 is our life groups. 10.30, they have children's church. And uh, then Wednesday night, 6.15. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for loving us and for teaching us. And God, for just making this world just so fun. And, and even with the critters that are all around us. Thank you, Lord, for what we've learned here tonight. Now, Lord, we thank you for our food that we're about to have. And God, we pray that you would uh, keep us safe and Lord, just help us to have a, a good night and come back together again soon here at church. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.